My name is Jeremy Norman. Uh, I'm the chairman and principal owner of Soho Gyms. And we now have six of these gyms in the centre of London. It's a group that we've built up over the last 15 years, uh, starting in 1994. And before that, I was in nightclubs. And one of the things I'm most proud of is that I started the world famous Heaven Nightclub, which is still going today. Now the gyms are running so well, um, my, my workload is slowing down a bit. And I, I guess you could say I'm sort of semi-retired. I heard on the radio someone saying that spring travels up through Britain at the pace of a walking man. And I thought that was an intensely romantic notion. And I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic to follow spring by boat uh, and see this glorious coastline? And I think it's really the fulfillment of a poetic dream. Nature is one of my great loves. And I think the tranquility you find in nature is very important for the soul. I'm also fascinated by natural history um, and fascinated by boats and coastal scenery. And this trip combines all of those loves. It also gives me an opportunity to spend six weeks to eight weeks with Derek, um, the love of my life, almost one to one. Well, I met Derek, I think in 1977, when he was 25 and I was 29. We didn't fall in love immediately. It was about a year later. Uh, we went on a, a long weekend holiday together and um, that's when love struck and we've been together ever since. I'm Derek Frost and professionally I used to be an interior designer and I stopped doing that about 10 years ago and now I look after the sort of social side, the private side of our lives and uh, some of our business interests. But where my ambitions now lie is in the direction of painting. And um, that's sort of what I see myself wanting to spend increasing amounts of time doing. And part of it is to do with learning to be in the moment. And I find that when I paint, that it, it gives me the excuse to really, really connect with the thing that is being painted. And this like a kind of love affair, it's amazing. You know, that if you paint a tree, you just learn, you fall in love with that tree. It's fantastic, you know, because the tree in itself is so beautiful. What most of us don't do is we never look at the tree. So my sort of interest in painting is not actually because I've got ambitions or think that I'm likely to be able to produce anything that's that worthwhile. And I'm in a happy stage in my life where I don't think I need to do it in order to earn a living or, you know, have no particular ambitions for it in that way. But I sort of approaching painting from the perspective of wanting to increase my love affair with the planet by getting closer to it. But there weren't really such things as world atlases. And um, this atlas, General Atlas of William Fadden is, is one of the first that could really go by that name. What where, date is it? Um, I think it's about 1799. I'm not 100% certain because it's not actually dated. Yeah. Most of the maps um, are actually drawn by William Fadden. This one, for example, is dated 1790. Geographer to the King, Charing Cross. Spring travels to the British Isles at the pace of a walking man, which is, I reckon is about somewhere between 15 and 20 miles a day. We're talking about maybe 40 days. Well, uh, to get spring from... to get from the Scilly Isles up to the tip of... Uh, northern it's a very romantic table. notion, isn't it? It's a very romantic notion, um, and spring is the most special time. It, you know, it's the golden time. Yeah, it's yeah. the time when everything, everything new, is everything new starting. and everything comes to life. It's a rebirth. Yeah. It's the annual rebirth of everything. Well, about three years ago, I think, the, the idea came to me. I've always been fascinated by the Western Isles of Scotland and feel I've never spent enough time there or seen enough of them. Every summer, Derek and Jeremy charter Killarney an 80-foot, twin-screw, diesel motor yacht. Usually, they cruise the Mediterranean. This journey will be different. They'll start at the tip of England, the Isles of Scilly. From there, they'll go up the Bristol Channel to South Wales. And from South Wales, up the coast of Wales, across the Irish Sea to Northern Ireland. Then, up the coast of Northern Ireland, right to the very top, to Raithland Island, 
and then across to the Mull of Kintyre in Scotland. They'll then proceed up the Inner Hebrides to Ullapool, taking in all the famous islands, and then from Ullapool, across the treacherous Minch to the Outer Hebrides, and from there, on to St Kilda, hopefully if they make it. Inevitably there'll be terrible disasters, so I hope there won't be too many. But I'm we're sure following we'll in some good footsteps, because Dr Johnson went on the trip of the, of, of the Western Isles, and, and then of course Mendelssohn did the same and wrote the uh, Hebridean Overture. Well, it's going to be ago. very exciting. Let's hope the weather's we kind. Yeah. Off we go tomorrow. You know, it's like an adventure. You don't really know what's going to mm. happen. There's enough bloody cases. The journey starts by train from London Paddington to Penzance in Cornwall. Look, it's beautiful. Look at it there. Yeah. I suppose that's the, well, that's that's the that's suspension. That's suspension section. It's very advanced um, mm. engineering, isn't it? Structural mm. engineering. You know, you know, to come up with such complex objects is amazing. Coming into Penzance. Mm -hmm. From Penzance, they go by car to the tiny fishing village of Mausel. They'll stay with their friend Rose Cecil and their goddaughter Dolly while they wait for Kalani to arrive. What's your favourite thing about Cornwall? There might be dolphins. And what else is, do, you, do you like about it? See, girls, they take your food. The What's name of say? my jewellery company is Almost Perfect. So almost I'm, Perfect. I'm able to ring people up or introduce myself and I say, hello, I'm Rose, I'm Almost Perfect. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> so can you tell us about this wonderful, joyous, very joyous, isn't yes. it? Yes. When you look more closely, the umbrella stick actually goes through the jelly baby's heart. Sometimes when I go to London, I'm aware of what an angry place it is. Too much concrete, perhaps. Yeah. Too many people, overpopulation, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. Constantly aware of there being too many people and those people putting too much stress on their environment and on each other. Can we go and look at the other piece? Yes, of course, Because that has, seems to have a quite different... Mm, there is, I think, a darker thing to that. It's called My World and it, it, it's about our world, the planet as well, right. and possibly what we're doing to it. I realised about a month ago, when I was thinking about the earth and animals in danger, I realised suddenly that the human race is incredibly successful, obviously, and is the most successful animal on the planet. And as such, it's eradicating all other animals. And I don't know whether it'll be in our lifetime, but it became completely clear to me that quite soon we will be the only animals left on this earth, apart from a few pets and a few domestic animals to provide food yeah. for us. The idea is these are kind of fantasy recipes. If you <laughs> follow these, this is how you can be. But you can be a dictator too if you follow this recipe. Really? I don't, I don't want to be a dictator. <laughs> but if I just mix this all up and have a meal of it, I can be a dictator. You will receive an aid package if this does not achieve mutually as your destruction. <laughs> While Jeremy spends some time with Rose, Derek goes off to meet another artist, Tom Rickman. Maybe it's obvious just looking at your work, but you know, what informs your work? Well, the light and different times of day, I suppose uh, evocative light as well. 
since since traveling and working, I mean, for about the last four years, I've started traveling and working. Right. Uh, not just that, but I've started doing that. And uh, you, you you just get saturated with images, lots of, and especially driving in the car, you're just sort of, right. You, you know, because you're doing a lot of mileage on yeah. the road, so you're not stopping and absorbing a certain place for a long time. It's just like little snapshots. I had such a good time. I was literally, I literally came back as you do when you. Go on, okay. go on a bit of an adventure. Yeah. You just come yeah. back with images, images, images. Whereas a painting like that, which is, yeah, I like that. Where that's, is well, that? that's up in the, that's the Highlands. You'd probably go near there. That's near Loch Inver. Yeah, that's up fantastic. Near, up near the Summer Isles. What do you kind of sell a piece of work like that for? In a, in a gallery, I suppose that would be about five or six thousand pounds. I suppose. Good for you. From Tom's, it's a short walk up the hill to see Lucy Cavendish. I hate giving up on a picture because it's a little bit like... It's a bit like losing and if you give up on a picture, you'll get to that same point in the next picture and you'll feel like giving up then. You know, if you, every, uh, every barrier you get through. I mean, they're quite a minimal. Is it a sort of, do you try and simplify what you see or...? Um, I don't think I try to, but I think... I think one does, because you're attracted to a landscape for a very particular reason. Right. So you, you automatically eliminate things so that, you, that you find less appealing or attractive. So yeah. you end up with a sort of a kind of caricature in a way of the landscape that you're looking at, because you've made certain eliminations and you've exaggerated the things that you find yeah. lovely about it. The weather is beautiful. It feels as if spring is already here. At last, Kalani is in the bay. After all the planning and anticipation, they can't wait to get aboard. Hi, Marshall Barrows. Well, today is Wednesday the 15th of April and we're just leaving Marzal on a beautiful sunny day as you can see, uh, heading for the Silly Isles. As they set sail, the sun glints on the smooth sea, so unusual for April. Why is it sort of so tropical? I mean, it's like people say it's almost tropical in the sea. It's not sort of a... Well, it lies right in the Gulf Stream in the southwest of Roaches. Oh. The whole of the Scillies is about 45 square miles of hundreds of islands and thousands of rocks. It's peppered. If you don't, you really, if you don't know that you don't want to be messing around with it. That's why, as I said to you, I wanted to, I wanted to make it in daylight and in fair weather. Yeah, yeah. We can see what's happening. Preferably it would have been better at low water, so you can see what's exposed, but we are going to be going in there in high water. But our entry is pretty straightforward. There is deep water all the way. It's well buoyed. It's clear day. It's lovely weather. It's not a problem. The arrival at Hewtown on St. Mary's Island is sublime. Spring is here and waiting for them. Later, Derek and Jeremy take the rib over to St. Martin's Island and walk to the top of the hill to take in more of those amazing views. Pure poetry this place, absolutely incredible. Old Codger said to us as we were coming up the lane, take always like this. Always take less. I think it's pretty windy most of the time, but we've got it on a perfect day. Look at the windbreaks they have for the um, for the cultivated flowers. I 
mean, how incredible to have this view. Isn't it lovely? Bar. May we ask how long have you been here on St Martin's? I've been here 53 years. I was born in Essex and grew up in Lancashire. And then came here 50 came here on holiday. But I mean, that's so beautiful, mm. isn't it? Looks like a sort of Aris Gladioli family. That's Spraxia. Sprax Spraxia. Spraxia. Well, that's worth knowing about, isn't it? Now, who's yes. the, the main gardener around here? Well, it's obvious that he's Mrs. <laughs> I'm the gardener, but Rodney is the grass cutter and the heaver around and the chopper back and the digger out and yeah, all that, you know, things. all the things. Brains and brawls. Wish I had one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I first saw it in Tresco. They planted three in a row right. in one part of the garden. And, all the, and every time we went there, we'd stroke it, you know. Oh, well, we must go and have a stroke. It does feel like so. What do you call it? S Silver tree. Silver tree. It's fantastic. Back on board, they reflect on their luck with the weather. Surely it can't last. You know, it was like almost like going to South Africa or... Well, I think you've got to remember that the Sillies are sort of, in terms of its plant kingdom, more akin to Madeira than they are to England. As the sun goes down, Derek indulges his passion for painting. Well, it's Wednesday the 16th of April, and it's our first full day in Scilly. We had a wonderful afternoon yesterday. The weather was just perfect, but I'm afraid the wind's blown up from the southeast, and um, we're heading for a bit of a gale. I think it's forecast seven, force eight um, for tomorrow, and it's certainly blustery today, as you can see. But anyhow, our friends are coming over by ferry, and presumably for the ferry, five to seven is nothing. Their first guests, Natasha Taylor and Jeremy Rose arrive from the ferry to join them. The wind is now at storm force, so they have to take a small ferry to Tresco Island rather than using their own tender. Despite the blustery weather, spring is everywhere in evidence. You know, I, I grow euphorbia in England, but nothing like that, and nothing. I think the equivalent to this that we've got dies right back into the ground. And look at this, it's like the whole hedge, and early April, and it's in full flower. I mean, it's. Fantastic. Uh, 1834, in August, I came here, so building the house and starting getting the garden up to the size it is, yeah. that happened in the first 20 years. It was only done as an interest to start with, yeah. but it's, uh, you need to get plants from other parts of the world, and of course it's all sailing ships, so you, people who are educated here become masters of ships or, you know, yeah. second command on the ships, and they could bring seeds and plants back and uh, introduce them to the garden. He died in 1872, so uh, the garden was already up to the size it is now. Basically, there were no trees here before, so the gardens have nestled in here. The whole island is only 750 acres. And the garden 17? 17. 17. I mean, it's a wonderful range of plants. I mean, the, the, the map here gives you an idea of where we can grow from, and it's basically between 30 and 45 in both hemispheres. Right. Uh, yeah, two bands right at the bottom there, yeah. yeah, yeah. There there, yeah. yeah. You know, California is an obvious one. Uh, little bits of Mexico and obviously the Mediterranean Basin, and the Canaries, Madeira, the Azores, uh, North Africa a little bit, and then in the lower hemisphere, you take South Africa, probably our biggest range. You've got uh, Chile and Argentina, Uruguay. We do a little bit from Brazil and Bolivia as well. And what's this? Ionia.
the world-famous gardens at Tresco live up to their vaunted reputation. Their guests soon wander off on their own, leaving Derek and Jeremy with Andrew, who shows them some of the garden's secrets. Yeah, Madeira and Geranium. It just does all of that growth. All the flower growth is only in a couple of months. But everything else is a couple of years old. The sort of corona of leaves. But they all, they all bend down, they're, they're scaffolding for the plant. And look at this explosion of purple mussel shells. Not much will grow under it. It's very, uh, uh, very good for taking water out of the ground. Could you tell us a bit about global warming and whether, whether you had any, feel any effect of that in this garden? It's not been obvious. What you do notice is that some of the plants are flowering at slightly different times of the year. Yes. Um, so they're becoming a little bit earlier, maybe by as much as a couple of months. These are very much more toxic than the normal euphorbia. Right. Uh, you put some of the sap on your skin, uh, within 20 minutes it burns through the skin. Woo. This is the old abbey, um, a 12th century priory. Um, that was originally inhabited by the monks from the Tavistock Priory. It's where the garden was first started. First consecrated bit of ground in Scilly, and it's something that has been used for burials even in the last 200 years. It looks like it's been restored at some time, or do yeah. you think? Yes, yeah. that looks like a restoration of the art. In August, it's fine. Yeah. You say a double base. It looks like the head of a double bed. Head of a double bed, but it's unfurls unfurl and then expands up to that height. You know, within a matter of a, you know a week or so. I think it's just wonderful. At the end of a beautiful but blustery day, it was great to be back on board a warm Kalani. The journey is discussed over a glass or two of wine. I find I'm very inspired by, by the advent of spring every year. I find it's a great sense of renewal. Yes. It's a wonderful time. Wonderful time. And, and Lord Grey, the famous naturalist, mm. re referred to it as the golden time. This amazing thing that's nature reinvents itself anew year after year after year. Yes. And it's fantastic. It's inspiring. You know, and it wherever is. we are in our own lives, yes. we have this amazing comes, rebirth mm. that we can be part of, and it's totally thrilling. We're glad to be at the beginning. Thank you for asking us. No, well, yes. we're thrilled. So, I mean, it is very much at the beginning I, of something. I, I mean, I would love to stay just to find my role in it. I'd be interested in the fishing, I think, if I had one role in a two months' time. In the, uh, oh, right. Yeah, that's, one, yeah. that's one thing we haven't even tackled yet. Tackle. <laughs> <laughs> We have an east northeast six to gale eight. This is rough to very rough. Next time on Chasing Spring. This is an interesting uh, discovery, a sort of classic, almost long barrow, and that would date it to the Neolithic or Early Bronze Age. And then 10 pounds for you. I'll do you 20. Who does it? I'm doing it. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, you. Rene just caught a shark. <laughs>